Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Chapter 244 Mount Longxiu, Snake At Gaiyue Sect, Linling Island The cultivators who escaped from Mount Jiao were all treated by the disciples of the Gaiyue Sect. They pulled out the heart-drilling worms and bandaged their wounds. However, the depressed atmosphere was hard to suppress and the air was filled with the scent of death. Xuemeng sat on the beach of Linling Island. He put his saber Long Cheng on his leg and watched the tide rise and fall. Suddenly, he heard footsteps behind him. He turned around, his eyes wide and full of hope. But when he saw who it was, he was immediately disappointed. He turned his gaze back to the vast sea. Mei Hangxiu sat down beside him. Your father received a message and went back to Shisheng Peak. He left in a hurry and told me to let you know. Your father and you don't seem to be in a good mood. If you know it, then get lost. Mei Hangxiu didn't leave but instead threw him a sheepskin bottle. Want to drink? Xuemeng turned around angrily like a hedgehog. Drink my ass. I'm not that depraved. Mei Hangxiu smiled. His golden hair swayed especially gently in the sea breeze. His eyes were like pale jade but also like two pools of green water with fallen flowers. It's just drinking. How is that depraved? Mei Hangxiu raised his hand and stroked his hair revealing a silver bell tied on his wrist. I've heard that the liquor at Qi Sheng Peak is good enough for people to talk about it but is it not good enough to get drunk on? I also heard that Grand Master Chu loves pear blossom white. You're his disciple. How can you not learn half of his tolerance? Xuemeng glared at him. He opened his mouth as if he wanted to curse, but in the end, he didn't. He grabbed the wine bottle and took a big gulp. How heroic! This is the wine from Kunlun Palace. The taste is the most. P.U. Young Master Shue spat out half a mouthful of wine. His face turned green. Cough 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 cough. Mei Hangxiu pursed his lips. He seemed a little surprised. You can't drink. Xuemeng didn't want to lose face, so he pushed away the hand that was trying to take back the wine skin. He raised his head and took another big gulp. This time, it was even bigger. After swallowing, he turned his head and spat it out with a wah sound. Mei Hangxiu was at a loss, I didn't know. You. Forget it. Stop drinking that. Get lost. Give me back the wine jug. Scram. Xuemeng anxiously bid whoever provoked him. He angrily glared at Mei Hangxiu. If you tell me to drink, I'll drink. If you tell me to stop, I'll stop. Who do you think I am? Am I that shameless? As he spoke, he forcefully slapped his own cheeks. He was already a little drunk. There was a rumor at Qi Sheng Peak that said Grand Master Chu would not get drunk even after a thousand cups but young Master Shui would be knocked out with one single cup. Mei Hangxiu was not from Qi Sheng Peak. Naturally, he did not know about this. If he knew, he would not have offered him such strong wine. After Shui Meng finished vomiting, he held the wineskin and drank again. This time, he gulped down four or five mouthfuls before gasping for breath. Then, his expression became even more unsightly. Mei Hangxiu immediately took back the wineskin and frowned. Don't drink anymore. Go back and rest. You've been blowing the sea breeze alone for a long time. But Shui Meng stubbornly said, I was waiting for someone to come back. I. I. Shui Meng stared straight at him. After staring for a while, he suddenly burst into tears, you don't understand, you don't understand, I'm waiting for my brother, I'm waiting for my Shizun, I'm waiting for Shimei. Do you know? A group of four people, one less is not right, one less is not the same. Mei Hangxiu knew how to comfort women. He just had to say a few comforting words or offered flowers or make sweet promises under the moonlight. Either or a combination of these was sure to work. However, he had never comforted a man before. Xuemeng however, 
did not need to be comforted. He had been bottling up everything inside of him and with the effects of the alcohol, it finally broke the dam. He just really needed to vent. Four people, I'm the only one left. Now, I'm the only one left I feel terrible. Damn, do you understand? May Hanks you sighed and said, I understand. Liar. You understand ghosts. Schwemeng cried. Suddenly, he buried his head and howled. He tightly hugged the long cheng saber as if he was hugging the last piece of dead wood, a piece of floating grass. The liar did not know how to pacify him, so he said, well, I don't understand. Heartless dog, why don't you understand? It was useless to reason with a drunkard. Shuemeng abruptly raised his face and fiercely glared at him. His eyes were full of tears but his anger was overflowing. What don't you understand? Isn't it easy to understand? He stretched out his fingers. We were four. He removed one finger, then another. When he removed the third finger, he broke down again. It was as if the third finger was his tear gland. Shuemeng said, there's only one left. I'm the only one left. Do you understand? May Hanks you. He did not want to be called a liar nor a heartless dog. Whether he understood or not, he could not answer. So, he simply did not speak. Shuemeng stared at him for a long time, then turned his head. Wretch. He was the flirtatious young master May. People would stare at his face would become infatuated. This was the first person who stared at him for a while and actually vomited. May Hanks you felt a slight headache. What's wrong with you? When you were young, I gave you fish mint leaf to eat and you vomited. When you grew up, I gave you Kunlun Palace wine to drink and you vomited. You're really harder to please than any lady. He looked at the person who was leaning over and vomiting until he couldn't even breathe. His light blue eyes were full of helplessness. Well, you're done scolding. You're done vomiting. Now, go back and rest. Your brother, your Shizun and your friend won't like to see you like this. As he spoke, he got up to support Shuemeng. Shuemeng was probably a little weak after vomiting. His footsteps were wobbly and he no longer tried to break free from the arms that were supporting him. Mei Hangsu took him across the long coast, through the back door of the Gyesex place, ready to send him into the guest room to rest. However, before he entered the hall, May Hanks Yu instantly felt a strong killing intent in the air. He suddenly reined in Shuemeng and the two immediately hid behind the corridor. Shuemeng was caught off guard. Oh, but May Hanks Yu tightly covered his mouth. Don't say anything. Take. Hand away. I. Want to vomit. He could barely hear the humming. May Hanks Yu said, swallow it. Shuemeng. Afraid that this drunkard would raise a ruckus, Mei Hangsu raised his hand and tapped Shui Meng's lips, casting a silencing spell. Then, he turned his face, his eyes looking into the sect hall. The scene in front of him shocked him. Mo ran. At this time, most of the sect leaders and elders had already returned to their respective sects. The incident at Mount Jiao was shocking and changed the situation making it an urgency for them to strengthen the boundaries of their territories. But in Gaiyu Ye sect, many injured cultivators were left behind. At this time, they were all gathered in the hall, staring at the man standing in the middle in horror. Tisk, tisk. Mo Ran was wearing a black and gold cloak that reached the ground. He narrowed his eyes and looked around. Look at these familiar faces. I didn't expect to see you all here alive after so many years. Someone mustered up the courage to shout at him, Mo. Mo Weiyu. Have you gone mad? Were you possessed by a nightmare again? Mad. Mo Ran's thin lips moved slightly and he laughed coldly. Speaking to this venerable one in this manner, the one who has gone crazy is you. After he finished speaking, everyone saw a flash of black light. That person who stood up to him had blood spurted out from his chest, 
straight to the top of the sky. Kill, kill. Mo ran, what did you do? Someone shouted at the top of his lungs, quick, go find sect leader Zhang. Go find sect leader Zhang. Oh. Mo ran slowly raised his eyes. Sect leader Zhang, Zhang Shi. That person's skills are not bad. Among the people this venerable one had killed, he's on the top ten. What nonsense are you talking about? Mei Hanks Yu also felt that something was wrong. This was not the Grand Master Mo that they knew. This man was full of resentment with his whole body overflowing with murderous intent. However, no matter how he looked at him, he looked exactly like Mo Ran. Even his voice was exactly the same. Who could completely replicate another person's appearance and voice in such a short time? In the hall, there was an elder who said, Grand Master Mo, I'm afraid you have been cursed by the demon dragon of Mount Xiao. Sit down first and let this old man will take your pulse. He was interrupted before he could finish. What do you mean? Mo Ran narrowed his eyes. Old man, what nonsense are you sprouting about this venerable one being sick? The elder. Since you want to treat illness so much, this venerable one will help you. After all, if there are no patients in the world, the doctor will starve to death. This venerable one understands this principle. As he spoke, a black shadow plundered the hall and in an instant, there were screams and blood splattered everywhere. When Mo Ran flicked his black robe, he calmly returned to the center of the hall and stood on top of the dark red carpet. The entire hall became full of people who were missing arms and legs. Some people were even more miserable, having their hearts, livers, spleens, and stomachs pulled out and died instantly. Mo Ran looked at the elder who had fallen to the ground and said, How is it? This venerable one sent so many patients your way for treatment. Are you happy? Mo. Mo Weiyu. Congratulations on the opening of your business and may you make a fortune. Mo Ran smiled, and then walked out of the group of corpses who were either rolling on the ground or dying with grievances. Oh, right. When he was in front of the hall, he turned his face and said to those people, I almost forgot to say, the upper cultivation world has been waiting for death for hundreds of years. Remember to inform your sect leaders that sooner or later, this venerable one will raise all the sects in the upper cultivation world to the ground. A stubborn person said hoarsely, Mo Ran, you don't have the balls. You only dare to come to the hall full of injured cultivators because you're scared of actually challenging the sect leaders. Afraid of them. Mo Ran narrowed his eyes. Even if you all joined hands and raised an army that could suppress the world, if this venerable one did not wish to die, none of you could hurt this venerable one. Mo Ran, are you crazy? Are you working with Hua Binan? What do you want to do? With Mo Ran's deep dimples showing and his eyes shining, he answered slowly after a while. You're asking what this venerable one wants. A strange light seemed to flash across his handsome face and then he closed his eyes. Even this venerable one doesn't know. In other words, no one in this world can give it to this venerable one and no one can make this venerable one happy. He continued indifferently, this venerable one has been a walking corpse for so many years and have lost all desires. However, if an answer has to be given then. A smile suddenly appeared on his face. When he opened his eyes, his black pupil seemed to flash with a scarlet luster. This venerable one want to watch you die. Everyone was stunned. Mo Ran's eyes swept across those pale faces and he couldn't help but laugh. This venerable one haven't seen such an interesting scene in a long time. It's quite lively. Mo Ran, you're really crazy. This is the second time you've said that. Suddenly, his smile tightened, and they heard an explosion. In the blink of an eye, Mo Ran had swept behind that person like lightning. He slammed his hand down and in a split second, brain matter splattered everywhere. Ah! Amidst the screams, Mo Ran faintly raised his handsome face that was splashed with blood, revealing a pair of extremely strange and beastly eyes. He swept through the scattered crowd like a sparrow. 
if this venerable one doesn't go crazy, I'm afraid I would have spoiled this esteemed one's plans. The skull of the person he called esteemed one was shattered and blood flowed all over his face. Moran was too lazy to even look at him, as if he was eating an ordinary meal. He calmly and coldly looked at the crowd. All right, this venerable one have killed enough idiots today. The corners of his mouth slowly curled up into a smile, and he casually pushed the corpse aside. It's boring to kill all you people at once. When that time come, this venerable one might feel lonely again. I'll let you live for a few days. After a pause, he continued, when this venerable one's hands got itchy, this venerable one will crush your heads again and have fun. Amidst the blood stains, he leisurely strolled out of the hall. When he reached the door, he glanced sideways. Before that, remember to keep your heads. After he finished speaking, he laughed heartily, wrapped himself in a cloak and suddenly swept over the eaves. His figure quickly disappeared behind the arch. Three days later. Inside the cave of Mount Longxiu, Mo Ran and Chu Wanning were still unconscious due to the effects of the spell. But then, the incense burner suddenly crackled and black smoke and blood gushed out from within. Immediately after, an ear-piercing scream rang out, echoing in the cave. Mo Ran abruptly opened his eyes, waking up with a start. His heart no longer hurt and he had no more injuries. The mysterious thin smoke that connected him and Chu Wanning had also dissipated. She's on. He immediately got up but suddenly saw that a third person had entered the cave at some point. That person stood in front of the stone table with his back to him, carefully examining the incense burner that was emitting a burnt smell. His figure was slender and handsome, indescribably good looking. He opened the lid of the burner and a slender white hand took out a thousand petal flower, holding it in the palm of his hand to examine it. It's really completely destroyed he said softly and then used two fingers to crush the black flower into powder. Immediately, a ray of white light rose from the ashes. That person looked at the white light with his hands behind his back, somewhat rejoicing. Oh, fortunately when I cultivated this flower, I also melted a piece of my own soul inside. If it wasn't for that piece of soul guiding me, it really wouldn't have been easy to find this cave in this vast world. That white light seemed to understand his words and slowly coiled around that person but its color became fainter and fainter until it finally disappeared completely. Moran said hoarsely, who are you? Hearing the movement, that person put down the burner and sighed. Awake already. Who are you? That person answered with a light tone, who else do you think I am? His voice sounded very familiar but Mo Ran had just woken up and his consciousness was still a little muddled as if he had a thousand year old dream and actually didn't react for a while. Who could this person be? Hearing what he said just now, it seemed to be related to that mysterious black flower. Cultivating flowers and poison was what Guy Yu Ye sect was best at. Was it? Hua Binan? Thinking of Hua Binan, he immediately thought of Shimei. Moran suddenly felt a surge of hatred, but before he could speak, that person turned around. The light in the stone cave was dim but as that person turned around, the entire room was instantly filled with light. He was really beautiful. This person's long hair that he used to let down, was tied up high at this moment. A fine embroidered scarf was placed neatly in front of his forehead. His countenance was very different. Unexpectedly, there was not the slightest bit of the usual delicate temperament. A pair of peach blossom eyes were flowing with emotions, bright and clear. Such a beauty yet Mo Ran was shocked as if thunder had struck him. Two words came out of his mouth, like a sharp arrow piercing through the dead silence. Shimei. The person who came was indeed Shimei, the person who came was actually Shimei. This peerlessly beautiful man stroked the stray hair on his temples and said lightly, Mo Ran, why are you so surprised to see me? His blood rushed to his skull as his brain buzzed. Mo Ran was trembling so hard his brain could not function at all. He could not imagine why Shimei would suddenly appear here and why he had such a strange expression. His whole body was stiff. 
All kinds of words were stuck in his throat. In the end, he hesitated and said. Your eyes. They're not injured. She may smiled and walked towards Mo Ran. I came here to see the person I like the most. If I were blind and ugly, who would like me? Mo Ran slowly recovered his senses from the other's playful demeanor and for a while, he couldn't say anything. His shock was like a black cloud pressing down on a city and his mind went blank. You, how could it be you, where's Han Lin divine hand? The anger in his heart suddenly surged like a flood. At this moment, Mo Ran finally understood how Shui Meng felt in his previous life. There was nothing more painful than being betrayed and schemed against by an old friend. Where's Han Lin divine hand? Oh, him. Shi Mei smiled. The future is long so there's no rush to explain. As he said this, he walked forward step by step until he was right next to Mo Ran. Shi Mei smiled. Compared to Han Lin divine hand, after going through so many twists and turns, I'd rather have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the person I admire first. Mo Ran was extremely angry and his heart was cold. His face became more and more ashen. Between you and me, what else is there to talk about? That handsome and refined man lightly laughed. Hmm. The corners of his eyes were soft like the clouds as he stared at Mo Ran's face. Our temperaments are at odds with each other so there really is nothing to talk about. As he said this, he walked past Mo Ran until he was in front of Chu Wanning. Before Mo Ran could react, Shi Mei had already gently extended a slender hand and lowered his head to stroke Chu Wanning's cheek. Mo Ran's mind became blank again and he still didn't understand the meaning of this action. Shi Mei gazed at Chu Wanning and spoke softly as if there was no one else present. Shi Zun, that brute hurt you, right? How pitiful. But then, have you recovered your memories? Tapping his scallion-like fingertip at the sleeping person's lower lip, Shi Mei narrowed his eyes. His beauty was still there, but it was like he had drunk wine. It's good that you've recovered your memories. Even now, I still can't figure out why you did those things to me. Once you're awake, we can exchange pointers again. He paused for a moment then smiled. In your past life, you've calculated everything, hidden things from the world and bullied this disciple so miserably. If it were anyone else who tormented me like that, dying a hundred times wouldn't be enough. But since it was you, I still love you. As he spoke, he glanced at Mo Ran, then leaned over to kiss Chu Wanning's cheek. He lowered his eyes and sighed. Who told me to like you this much, my good Shizun? End chapter. Dumb Husky and his white cat Shizun. Chapter 245. Mount Longxiu, Rival. As if struck by lightning, Mo Ran froze in place. Unbelievable. This can't be real. What is Shi Mei saying? What is Shi Mei doing? What, what is going on? Mo Ran couldn't swallow this shocking turn of events. He didn't even realize that Shi Mei was kissing Chu Wanning. This scene was too outrageous. Seeing it with his own eyes, he felt as if he was hallucinating. He covered his forehead with his hand, his temples throbbing. In his mind, Shi Mei's warm smile flashed as he called out softly, Aran. But this person in front of him. He actually, actually. His hair stood on end. Shi Mei likes. She's on. How is that possible? Shi Mei had never shown any interest to Shi Zun in that way. It would be more convincing if it was Shui Meng that liked Chu Wanning than Shi Mei. How could Shi Mei like Shi Zun? He had always been cautious and respectful. He didn't speak much and didn't even come near to Shi Zun. After lessons and practices were done, he would leave in a well-behaved manner. How is this possible? Shi Mei straightened up and looked at Mo Ran from the corner of his eyes. He chuckled, it seems like I've scared someone. You, are, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Shi Mei was calm and unruffled, isn't it my Shi Di who is the ridiculous one? Am I the one who bullied Shi Zun so badly? 
Mo Ran's face suddenly turned red. His eyes were angry and confused. If it was anyone else, he would have fiercely rebuked them. But the person standing there was none other than Shi Ming Jing, whom he mistakenly thought he was in love with for two lifetimes. He choked and couldn't say anything for a while. Shi Mei was much more thick-skinned. He said lightly, but it's not like I haven't done ridiculous things as well. For example, I pretended to like you and treated you well for so many years. Even when I was interrogated by Jiangui, I endured the pain and lied to you and said. I like you. Pausing for a moment, a trace of mockery appeared in his eyes. Stop fooling around. If I really fall in love with someone like you who was nothing but a pretty face, I would really stab myself in the eyes and die. Mo ran. Why aren't you saying anything? Are you not convinced yet? Shi Mei's face was beautiful even when he was sneering. He glanced at Mo Ran and touched Chu Wanning's chin. Mo Ran was so angry that he was about to summon Jianghui. However, there was only a flash of scarlet in his palm and the spirit flow immediately disappeared. Shi Mei was too lazy to lift his eyelids as he said, Don't waste your energy. In that other life, Wanning set up this spell sacrificing half of his earth soul so he could pull out the goo flower from you. You are now no longer under its control but your body will need more than 10 days to recover its spiritual power. If you want to fight with me now, it would be like hitting a rock with an egg. Who are you calling Wanning? You're so unreasonable. How come you are allowed to bully your Shizun and destroy your ancestors, but I'm not allowed to love my Shizun? You. You've already done him and tasted it countless times. She may chuckled. It's my turn now, right? Actually, I feel a bit wronged for fucking someone you've already fucked. But since it's him, I'll bear with it. Mo Ran was furious. He couldn't summon his holy weapon but he knew how to fight in close combat. Sigh. That's why I said that I hate people like you who don't know how to be civilized. Shi Mei suddenly let go of Chu Wanning and began to fight with Mo Ran inside the cave. The cave was dark and gloomy. The two tall men's figures were projected on the wall as they fought. They were like two dragons entangled in the clouds with flames and lightning surging. Shi Mei wasn't good in martial arts so he wasn't a match for Mo Ran in close combat. Seeing that the situation was bad for him, he waved his sleeve. Rolling spirit snakes surged out and locked onto Mo Ran. He took the opportunity to dash to the side, picked up Chu Wanning and flew out of the cave. She's on. Mo Ran struggled to shake off the cold and sticky snakes and chased after him. He saw Shi Mei standing on top of a tree, a bright moon shining behind him. Shi Mei laughed. Don't bother chasing after me. You've just recovered. Even if you risk your life, you won't be able to catch up to me. Shi Ming Jing, why, why are you like this? Aran. Shi Mei smiled. Shi Di, have I ever told you that I hate the names Shi Mei and Shi Ming Jing? So if you don't mind, can you call me by my real name from now on? What? My surname is Hua and I have no courtesy name. My birth name is Binan. Hua Binan? Seeing that Mo Ran's eyes suddenly widened, Shi Mei smiled even more brightly. Oh right, since we're martial brothers, I'll tell you a very important piece of news. Don't go to the Gaiyu Ye sect. If you go there now, Zhang Shi will tear you to pieces. Don't try to follow me. Be good and return to Shi Sheng Peak as soon as possible. Mo Ran was stunned for a moment, then his face turned pale. Why do you want me to go to Shi Sheng Peak? In this life, you weren't as stupid. Shi Mei laughed. Shikshan prepared a little surprise for you. You'll get it when you get there. Mo Ran tasted blood in his throat. His eyes were burning. He didn't know if he was more sad or angry. He shouted, Shi Mei, what do you want to do? What are you scheming? Didn't you tell me that the Shi Sheng Peak was your home? Didn't you tell me, that uncle saved your life? Didn't you tell me that we were the most important people to you? His voice was trembling in the end. 
his fingers were clenched into fists. Could it be that you're lying to me? Are you saying that after so many years, two lifetimes? Moran suddenly stopped. A chill pierced his heart. Are you saying that in both lifetimes, everything that happened, it was all because of your schemes? She may didn't say anything. He floated on the treetops in his loose robe and looked at him with a smile. His peach blossom eyes were curved and his chin was sharp. In this misty mountain, he looked like a fox in the night. You. Every word was trembling between his gritted teeth. Moran's mind was in a mess, and his eyes were filled with madness. She may, say something. From that year when he gently persuaded him by the candlestick, up to now when they traveled together and were inseparable. Say something. He had once been a slender and elegant youth. Later on, he had been lying in his arms in the snow, telling him not to hold grudges and not to blame their she's on. Moran almost broke into pieces. You clearly died. I saw it with my own eyes. I brought your body back to Shisheng Peak. You can't be Shimei. You. How is it possible? It's because you're stupid. A clear voice sounded. Shimei finally opened his mouth, but it was not without sarcasm. You boorish people only know how to cultivate spiritual cores. You all look down on medical cultivation. It doesn't matter if it's you, the sect leader, or even our wise Shizun. He chuckled at this point. I have to correct myself, Shizun is not boorish just reckless. However, people like you don't care about medical cultivation. Moran muttered, medical cultivation. It's difficult to revive a dead person. She may said slowly, but I have many ways to make a living person appear to be dead. If Moran's mind was clear, he would have heard the flaw in Shimei's words. Even if medicine could make a living person appear dead, in his previous life, he had guarded Shimei's corpse himself for seven days in Skyfrost Hall. After that, he saw Shimei being buried with his own eyes. At that time, the coffin had three layers. Each layer was sealed with a longevity nail and the sealing soil was even thicker. Without alerting the mausoleum watchers, which living person could crawl out of such a grave by themselves? Thus, there were only two possibilities. First, Shimei was lying. Second, in his previous life, there was someone who had infiltrated Shi Sheng Peak, released the sealed and opened the coffin from the outside and released the corpse of Shimei who had come back to life. However, Moran was currently in a mess. It was as if an invisible hand had misplaced his internal organs. He was not in the right frame of mind to think clearly. When he heard Shimei's words, the pale face in his memory immediately appeared before his eyes. Under the heavy snowfall, Shi Mingjing died. From then on, Mo Ran hated himself for being powerless. He hated Chu Wanning for simply watching and not doing anything. From then on, he stepped into the abyss and fell into darkness. But who knew? It was fake, it was all a setup. He had actually gone crazy for half his life for a person who had faked his death. He had been infatuated with him for half his life. He had killed everyone in the world and in the end, he had killed the man who loved him the most in this world. Ridiculous. It's all absurd. The anger and pain made his scalp numb. His pupils constricted as he said in an almost tyrannical manner. You, can actually be this blasé about these. My heart is at ease. She may smiled. What about you Taxi and June? When these words came out, it was as if someone had pinched his weak point. No matter what the reason is for holding the butcher's knife, whether it is because of resentment or whether you were unwilling, your hands are now stained with blood. As he spoke, he deliberately hugged the unconscious Chu Wanning tighter in his arms. It was almost as if he was showing off his spoils of war. How can Taxi and Jun whose hands are soaked with blood be together with the venerable Yu Heng of the night sky? The last bit of color on Mo Ran's face faded away. Shi Mei was very clear about his weakness. Thus, he waved his scorpion pincers and continuously pierced the venom into his body. 
he narrowed his eyes and stepped closer. Are you worthy of him? Don't you think you're too filthy for someone like him? You are stealing. The wind rose and the fog dispersed. A bright moon peeked out from behind the clouds. She may smiled, but every word was sharper than a knife. Taxi and June, all the days you spent with him were stolen. You know best what kind of person you are. I don't need to say more. Moran's lips were pale. He was angry, sad, afraid, regretful, and heartbroken. No one could feel so many emotions all at once. They would go crazy. I. Don't bother. She may sighed. Do you think that being Grandmaster Mo for half of your life and saving a few lives is enough to write off all your sins? He looked at Mo Ran's face and smiled. You think too much. Mo Ran was at a loss for words. Now, Shizun already has the memories of his other life. The absurd things you have done, the people you killed, the cities you destroyed, the sex you bullied and the ancestors you destroyed he will remember all the hurt you have done to his heart. He now knew all of it. He paused, as if he was looking at the expression on Mo Ran's face with interest. Then he smiled with satisfaction. Grandmaster Mo, it is time to lower your head. Admit your guilt. Lower his head. Admit his guilt. A life of absurdity, of extreme evil, was all wrong. Mo Ran's throat rolled. His eyes were red as he stared at the person on the treetop. But when he saw Chu Wanning in his arms, he couldn't help but feel hurt. His eyes withered like cattail leaves. He turned his head away. Think about it. When he wakes up and finds out that you have lied to him for so long, how angry will he be? She may gently stroke Chu Wanning's cheek. His slender fingers slid past his lips. Shi Zun has a strong temperament. You know this do you think he will forgive you? The words pierced the heart and the listener felt as if they had fallen into an ice cave. Forgive him. He had never asked for it. But he didn't want the trial to come. He didn't dare to imagine that this day would come. Mo Ran suddenly closed his eyes. His eyelashes trembled slightly. Shi Mei's voice sounded so ethereal in the fog, like a Buddha advising people to turn back. Don't chase after us. Go back to Shisheng Peak. When you get there, you'll naturally know what the surprise I'm talking about is. His voice echoed. Accept the surprise well. Don't resist it. After a pause, he seemed to think of something. His eyes turned and his peach blossom eyes stared at the person under the tree. Also, Aran, the two of us are completely different people. You won't be able to understand what I want. He said it gently in the same way he asked him back in their disciples' room whether the meal was delicious or if there was enough chili oil. I am not as crazy as you. I won't easily frame my friends and family. But. He changed the topic, but didn't say much. Mo Ran jerked his head back. What do you want? She may saw his gaze sweep over Chu Wanning. He couldn't help but smile. You don't have to worry. Shi Zun is with me. I will only love him. I won't hurt him. He is as pure as jade. I know how to take care of him better than you. Every intonation was soaked between his lips and teeth until it was tender and then he spat out lightly. Mo Ran was so incited that his whole body was trembling. If he still had any spiritual power, Shi Mei would have been torn to pieces. But he didn't have any spiritual power left. She may knew that he didn't have any spiritual power at the moment, so he did and say whatever he wanted. She may chuckled. But those martial brothers and sisters at Shi Sheng Peak, and even Uncle, Auntie, and the young master. His eyes moved, and he slowly finished his words. If you don't handle the surprise well, you will kill them a second time. You see, if Shi Zun wakes up and find out that you've once again hurt everyone, and that you're selfish and chose to live without doing anything, will he even look at you for one last time? End chapter Dumb Husky and his White Cat Shi Zun Chapter 246 Mount Longxiu
binding. Moran gritted his teeth so hard that they were about to shatter. His eyes almost popped out of their sockets as he roared, Shi Ming Jing. Shi Mei flicked his sleeve. Under the moonlight, the hem of his robe fluttered. He stood on the treetops and turned his head. His handsome face was flowing with splendor. Go on. If you don't leave soon, Shi Zun might wake up. If he did and sees us standing here arguing, I'm afraid he won't be happy. After a pause, he smiled and added, That's right, Aran. Next time we meet, remember to call me Hua Binan. You can also call me Grandmaster if there's a next time. This time, after he finished speaking, he soared into the air. His steps were light and graceful. In a split second, he disappeared into the dense forest of Mount Longxiu, his figure could no longer be seen. Only his pleasant yet cold laughter remained like a spider's web descending with a ghostly glow, lingering for a long time. Shi Mei. Shi Ming Jing. Amidst the mountain fog, Shi Mei no longer turned his head to look at Mo Ran. Instead, he held the person in his arms and quickly swept past the uneven cliffs. His cloak and robe fluttered in the wind. He felt an indescribable joy in his heart. His eyes were shining. He was like a hunter returning from a rewarding journey, waiting to feast on the fruits of his victory. But as he flew low, he suddenly heard the person in his arms call out in a hoarse voice due to the nightmares from the other life. Mo ran. Shi Mei's happy expression slightly stiffened. He then narrowed his eyes. His gaze turned icy and angry. What's so good about him that you're willing to do this for him? But Chu Wanning couldn't hear him. He was having a high fever. His handsome face was now as white as an ice lake. One could even see some of the light blue veins underneath his skin. Chu Wanning murmured softly, Mo Ran. Shi Mei suddenly stopped. It seemed that he was a little impatient and frustrated because he had endured for too long. However, he hesitated for a while and restrained himself. In front of the unconscious Chu Wanning, he was not as calm and at ease as he was in front of Mo Ran. After staring at Chu Wanning's face for a while, he said, stop thinking about him. Soon enough, Mo Ran will no longer exist. You can be with me from now on. Pausing for a moment, he continued, but I know that you owe him a lot. If you can't forget him for a while, it's fine. After I succeed, I will have enough energy to slowly wear you down. After saying this, he once again swept up from the ground, summoned his sword in midair and flew straight towards the direction of Mount Chiao's hero's tomb. It was very late at night and the burial ground of the Rufeng sect was very quiet. The moonlight sprinkled over the graves one after another. Those people who had been made into Zhenlong chess pieces by Su Xuanglin could no longer move since they no longer have their source of spiritual power. They could only stiffly stand still in their original positions. Shi Mei used the stored blood of the Nangong clan to open the barrier of Mount Xiao. He turned his eyes and saw Nangong Lu standing blankly at the foot of the mountain. Nangong Lu could not be considered a complete chess piece. He was only a half-finished piece so he still had a trace of vitality left. However, this person had completely lost his mind and continued to act with the mind of a five-years-old child. Shi Mei did not have the leisure to kill him, not to mention that he could be of some use to him. Close friend Gage, you're back. When Nangong Lu saw him, he smiled. His slightly chubby face had a sincere smile. Su Xuanglin had considered Shi Ming Jing as his close friend, so Nangong Lu also followed suit and called him close friend Gage. This form of address made Shi Mei pause for a moment. He then narrowed his eyes and said, don't call me that. Ah. Nangong Lu looked at him blankly. You don't like me calling you that. I don't like it. Just call me Hua Binan. Shi Mei's face was gloomy. Go on ahead. Open the way for me. Where is close friend Gage going? There was no use arguing with this five-year-old child so Shi Mei just impatiently said, take me to the secret room where Su Xuanglin used to stay. Nangong Lu led him away. In fact, 
that secret room was not a secret to Shime. It was just that there were too many places along the way where he needed to use the blood of the Nangong family. Although he had some, he was carrying Chu Wanning in his arms. It was really troublesome to free his hands. It was better to use Nangong Lu. After walking for a while, Nangong Lu suddenly turned around. He couldn't hold back his curiosity and asked, Close friend Gaig, are you bringing a friend back to spend the night? Spend the night. She may seem to be pleased by these words. His eyebrows relaxed slightly. He smiled and said, pretty much but it's not just spending the night. In the future, he'll be spending many, many nights here. It should be said that he's staying here permanently. Nangong Lu became more and more curious. Who is he? She may thought for a moment and suddenly smiled. You really want to know? I'm afraid that it's something children must not know. Nangong Liu's eyes widened. A middle-aged man with such a childlike expression was really disgusting and comical. They walked all the way to the door of the secret room. The door opened and a lamp was already burning inside. The room was quiet and simple. There was only a bed, covered with a thick saber-toothed tiger skin and a snow-white gauze curtain. Beside the bed, there was a small table and a kong hao. Other than that, the four walls were empty and there was nothing else. She may help Chu Wanning settle on the bed. He flicked his sleeves and sat on the side of the bed. He lowered his eyes and stared at Chu Wanning's face. The candlelight was very bright, illuminating this familiar face. When he was awake, his sword-like eyebrows reached his temples and his phoenix-like eyes were full of power. But at this moment, his face was haggard. The lines that were drawn to his chin were like the remnants of smoke. Shi Mei didn't care about this. He only felt that after two lifetimes, Chu Wanning and Mo Ran had finally been defeated by his hands. At this moment, Chu Wanning was lying next to him. Mo Ran had temporarily lost his spiritual power but soon he would obediently walk into his trap. His plan was finally about to come to fruition. Just as he was lost in thought, he suddenly heard Nangong Lu come over and say, Huh? This person looks very familiar. She may looked at him. Can you remember who he is? I can't remember. She may reminded him. In the past, this big brother scolded you and embarrassed you. Huh? Where? In the main hall of the Rufeng sect. Nangong Lu said blankly, Ah, really? But how come I don't remember at all? She may was silent for a while. Then he smiled gently. It's good that you don't remember. Nangong Lu didn't know the meaning behind his words. He tilted his head and looked at Chu Wanning for a while. Then he suddenly said, but he's really good looking. He looks good even with his eyes closed and not smiling. Shi Mei smiled. He's Taxi and Jun's favorite concubine. How can he not be good looking? Favorite concubine. What does that mean? Shi Mei's smile deepened. You'll know when you grow up. Now, go and help me pick some oranges and boil some water. He has such a bad temper. If he doesn't have something good to eat when he wakes up, I'm afraid he'll get angry. Nangong Lu prepared to obey. But when he reached the door, he hesitated. Shi Mei saw this and asked him, What's wrong? Oranges. Nangong Lu hesitated and bit his finger. Do you know when His Majesty will come back? The His Majesty he was talking about was Su Xuanglin. She may naturally wouldn't tell Nangong Lu that Su Xuanglin was dead. So, he smiled and said, Be good and do your job well. His Majesty will come back soon. Nangong Liu's eyes lit up. He immediately carried the small bamboo basket next to the door of the secret room and went out to pick oranges. She may looked at the place where he left. After a while, he said with a smile, interesting. When they were in their right frame of mind, they fought against each other. When they were not, they became brothers. Sure enough, there are many things in this world that are the purest when they're young. Once they grow up and get involved in politics and disputes, 
they become filthy. As he said this, he turned around and stroked Chu Wanning's cheek. You see, most of the people in the cultivation world are like him. They're not worthy of your protection. She may trace the handsome face with his fingertips and sighed. Why do you have to spend so much effort for these people? You sacrificed your soul, tear through time and space, and endure all sort of humiliation, and fought with me for two lifetimes. Chu Wanning, who was in deep sleep, naturally wouldn't answer him. The pain and nightmares of his previous life tormented him, making his cheeks burn and his brows knit together. She may looked at him for a while with his chin in his hand. He then took out a silver bottle of taper-scented dew from his kinkin pouch. Drink some of this. She may open the bottle of taper-scented dew. I know you'll definitely dream about your other life. I knew you would come to the Xianyuan Pavilion, so I asked them to take out the taper-scented dew for auction. I wanted to make you feel better but I didn't want to make other people suspicious. So, you see, it's better to be with me than with Mo Ran, right? As long as you make me happy, I can give you a taste of this kind of thing every day. But what can he give you? He only knows how to fight. He poured the fragrant dew into a small white porcelain cup and brought it to Chu Wanning's lips. After feeding him the concoction, Shi Mei stared blankly at his hard-won victory for a while. Then, he suddenly thought of something and his eyes lit up. He rummaged through his kinkin pouch and finally found a pitch-black ribbon. He put this ribbon on Chu Wanning's eyelids and cast a concentration spell, completely covering his eyes. After doing all this, he slowly got up. He pinched Chu Wanning's chin and looked at him from left to right. He was very satisfied. Yes, it really looked good. No wonder Mo Ran liked to tie you up and fuck you like this in the other life. It's not bad to learn from him once in a while. At least he knew something interesting in this aspect. His smile had always looked very gentle and it was no different from before. His fingertips slowly brushed Chu Wanning's chin, lips, nose, and finally fell on the black ribbon covering his eyes. He then used that kind of gentle voice that made other people shudder and said, She's on, wake up quickly. I, just thought of a very interesting trick. When you wake up, why don't we play together, hmm. End chapter.